morning all uh, we had a reasonable night's sleep the power tripped once during the night so we had to get up and sort that out so I'm not quite sure what's going on with the electric but we just spoke to the guy who owns the campsite and he says he's been having a few issues so it might not be old van fingers crossed because if you're a regular viewer you'll know we had a few issues with the uh, inverter at the end of last year obviously French campsites tend not to have um, very strong power connections anyway uh, but he does say it's the first time they've had a major issue but it did trip his big big fuse boxes and Doug is um, just about to fix the new part on the bottom of the van okay as I say if you remember we took off the bottom of the door panel going to an air in Valerie Sasson last year um, hit a bollard going in. The bollards were painted grey, the same colour as the blinking tarmac and you just couldn't see it at all. We haven't got a new door latch yet um, so we are going to have to go and get one of those at some point. Sun's out, it's not warm but the sun is out so I think what we're going to do is go to La Rochelle which apparently is about an hour and 50 from here. We were going to go and see a sea serpent that's on the beach, it's a work of art that it comes with the tide in and out. Um, but that's up near Nantes again, so we might do that tomorrow instead on the way back up north. But today, we, we might go slightly south for a change. <laughs> Just a case of four screws, I think, isn't it, with caps on. <laughs> Much cleaner than our van. When we get back, we might take it in and get a proper valet done. There's a place not, not too far from where we're living at the minute that does proper polishing. Scuff on the door there when we took the thing out. And also, when we went to Bruges that time, we took out the, a bit of the paintwork off the bumper as well. Still got a bit of yellow bollard on it. It is actually cracked, that one. So we'll see if we can get that fixed as well. Uh, this campsite we have been to before. It's Court de Valais, um, near Ervaux. Um, I'll put a link to the previous video because I've done a little tour obviously this is very early in the season I think there's one caravan here and one camper van there was a lady parked next to us just before but um, season does start 1st of March but obviously it's not warmed up yet <laughs> right we are coming on to Ile de Ray bridge it grey over the side here so I think we might get rain well in true Bella's Big Adventure style, put my coat on, put my scarf on, got my bully out, and the heavens opened. Absolutely torrential rain. So we're just steaming the car, waiting for it. It looks like it's clearing just on the horizon over there. So despite being togged up to high heaven, <laughs> we're just going to sit it out for a minute. It's still raining, but it's slowed slightly, so we're going to risk running over that bit over there it really is just a river this car park gosh look at it it's pouring down <laughs> oh dear god did we say it slowed down i don't think so we're going to try and find somewhere to have some lunch because it is lunch time now the sky is almost as grey as the cobbles <laughs> but it's still beautiful so I can only imagine how fantastic it looks when the sun's shining blue sky over there there is blue skies yes minuscule amount of blue sky but very pretty Beautiful little rusty boot. Well, as you can see, while we've been eating, stuffing our faces in fairness, the sun has actually come out and it looks so beautiful now. So this is where we went, Le Belem. It was very good. We've eaten enough food to last us all day now, so that's what's done for today. There are a few campsites on the island, but it is predominantly in July and August, apparently full of Parisians that come here for their holidays. It's well worth a little visit, because it is stunningly beautiful, especially when the sun's shining and it's not horizontal rain. 
This is the Bay of Biscay. One of the roughest seas in Europe, I think. <laughs> Looks all right now it's still raining. It's more turquoisey. And there are lots of beautiful sandy beaches. You can just see one in the distance. So there are these sort of fortifications around the wall. Not quite sure, presumably some sort of sea defences at some point in time. Couldn't get around the top because there was a massive puddle from all the rain. That was really pretty village and I think the rest of the island is pretty similar. Very pretty, lovely sandy beaches. We just need a bit better weather, it's a little bit chilly. Morning all. Today we are finally rescuing Hamish from her winter hibernation and heading back north. So first stop is an air near Chateaubriand, so that's our destination for today. So when we get there, I'll give you a quick look around. See right guys, we have had a slight change of plan as always the way. Uh, we headed to an air park at Chateaubriand and it's sort of a barrier but a bollard thing that you have to put your card details in to, to check in. And it normally gives you a little slip of paper with a code on it and it lets you get water and waste. But we tried four or five different cards and it accepted the pin numbers and then said cancelled. So I don't know whether it was short on paper or something, but it wouldn't let us in anyway. So we had to reroute <laughs> to another air park in Nose. Um, it's slightly noisier than the other one was. We are next to a lake. I'll give you a little squiz round in a bit. It's nothing fancy. It was literally to get us further north, but we're not far from Nantes again now. So we're not going to go into town or anything. We're literally going to have some food, have some sleep, get up early and head north. As you can see, right next to the air is a car park with a height barrier of two metres. So if you're in a short van, or you've got a car with you that you're not towing, like we have, there is somewhere to park your car. There's 20 positions and over here there's a service area with water, toilet and grey waste. All included for 10 euros I think we paid. Immediately opposite there is a big water sports lake. Obviously at this time of year it's very quiet but nice to walk around. And there's little picnic tables and there seems to be a building of some description over here. I don't know whether that's just where you hire all Oh, it's a restaurant, is it? All oh, right, cool. As you can see, very pretty. There is a bit of a busy road near it, but it's, you know, not that bad. I think it'll be quieter later. There is a kiddies playground. Apparently there used to be an air just over where the car park is as well, which they've moved it to the side of the road now. But this will be a nice area in the summertime. It's a bit squelchy underfoot at the minute. <laughs> Rosé and cocktail bar there and a restaurant hit the spot or heat the spot take the first exit onto route dumont saint michel well as you probably heard by the sat nav there we are off to le mont saint michel so we've just driven for about oh i don't know an hour and a half from the air to get to mont saint michel which i can't speak at the moment <laughs> Anyway, so that's our plan for today. We're just going to park in their car park. It's quite expensive, I think. It's, it's got grey waste and black waste, but that's it. Uh, it's about 27 euros or something, but that includes a free bus shuttle to the actual island. You can just see it coming into view now uh, to the left of the van. It's very pretty. And for a change, the sun is shining. Actually, just the other side of the official car park there is an air and a campsite but unfortunately for us it doesn't open until the end of March. Right we have arrived at parking we are in P8 this is the car park it's quite big not too busy because it's only March <laughs> it's not very level though as you can probably see from our leveling it's just managed it 
Um, but yeah, it's fairly quiet at the minute. It's still quite early. It's only about half past 10, quarter to 11. So now we need to go and find the bus. I've parked my car in P7, so it's just the other side of that hedge, so we can see it. And I think the buses are in this general direction. So let's go see. Well, it's looking quite impressive, even from here, I have to say. Obviously, we have a St. Michael's Mount in the UK just off the coast, but I'm not sure it's as big as this one. I haven't been to that one either. Maybe I should do that next. So that's where you catch your bus. And as you can see, at half past 10, there's a massive queue. There's also an information centre here. We're going to walk. The queue's massive. It is, yes. The signs are amazing, aren't they? Oh, it's quite pretty. <laughs> it's like being in Hogwarts or something. Well, don't come here if you're not fit. <laughs> it's a lot of steep steps. And no flat bits, apart from inside the shop. <laughs> There's the, the church behind. It is 1,000 years old. 1,001 actually. 60 odd years to build. shutters on the holes as well that you can see out to hordes of people arriving <laughs> of the cows <laughs> there's a little shopping center and some restaurants so this is the campsite when it's open. It's obviously not open at the moment. So we've got waste and water, electricity points at each place. It doesn't open until the end of March. 21 euros at low season, 25 to 50 at high season. So as you can see, it's quite a big campsite. Well, we've come back with silly hat and all to try and catch the sunset. We're a little bit early, but look at this. very peaceful quiet night on the car park um yeah so we're just gonna head off towards Trayport now because we were gonna go to Honfleur but um it, it leaves us quite a long drive the next day because we're gonna have to get to Calais and then another three hour drive once we get into the UK and obviously the van goes slower than the car so we're, the times they give you for distances are generally car times and not van times mostly driving but when I get there I'll show you around Morning all. It's a beautiful sunny morning here. Um, we're in an air. So they're individual pitches and they do have electricity. It's a camping car one. Um, you get a card and load it up with a little bit of money and then you pay at the entrance. It's 
about, I think it was 10 euros. I'll go and check on the bollard. What I would say is there's not an awful lot to do in the town. We're not far from Trayport, but you would need um, transport of some description. There's a plan here of Lair de Flux. Uh, as you can see, there are 30 pictures with electricity. And just outside the entrance, so if you've got a pass and don't want to park the night, you can just come and empty. We've got bins, recycling. And over here, you've got your grey waste, fresh water and toilet waste, I think. And then there's a big kiddies playground just next to it. We are just heading back to the Euro Tunnel this morning. These uh, return journeys tend to be mammoth driving, eating, sleeping <laughs> days, but um, it's a long way in the van. So you can't do the speed limit because obviously we're five tons, so you're limited on the speed. So now it is breakfast and then we'll hit the road. Well, that's breakfast done. So, just got to get these dishes put away. Started the engine, demisting the windows a little bit, and we've done the levelling. Um, we've done quite well. We've only filled up the fuel twice, I think, in the whole week. So that's pretty good, eh? In the car, and once in the van. It is slightly low. Doug's just going to empty out the wastewater because we both managed to have showers without running out of water so the tank must be quite full by now. Even in the van, even though it's got sat nav, we tend to use our phones for navigation but as it says it's 1 hour 31 with some tolls. That'll be obviously at a car speed so it might take us two hours. One of the things I meant to say was when you're traveling in France they have all sorts of <laughs> rules and regulations and one of the things is if you have driving glasses you need to have a spare set in your vehicle. Um, it's one of those laws that if they want to pick on you they will. Um, obviously if you break your glasses then you've got spares etc and sunglasses even prescription ones don't count apparently. Now Unfortunately, because we're in separate vehicles, they offered us both different uh, boarding times. It didn't happen in the past. So Doug's been offered 12.48 instead of 2 o'clock and I was offered 12.18. So I don't quite know what we're going to do there. There's somebody here. Now you don't see many wolfhounds, but there's two there. And there's another four at the back here. I've never seen so many wolfhounds. Oh, five at the back. Seven wolfhounds. How beautiful are they? We are here, we're on an earlier train again. I think it took us three hours, uh, not three hours, it took us two hours to get here and they shuffled us onto a 12.48 train instead of the two o'clock one, which is the one we booked. Um, so that's good. So it gives us, you know, we're a little bit earlier than planned. Uh, we're just about to board, I think, dug some about five or six vehicles back. They did check the van. Um, inside this time no dogs blocking their exit um they didn't look in the fridge but they did look in the toilet and things like that looking for people mostly There's still people getting off the train so they weren't quite ready for us one 
once you've done it once <laughs> this is only my second time it's not as terrifying i still wouldn't want to do it in a motorhome but doug does it and he makes it look quite easy i'm not confident enough to drive off and it's too long for me car fairly simple but i do always book with a top box or added uh, bike rack or something because then they put you in this tall section and i get slightly claustrophobic otherwise the um lower car section is double decker so i imagine the roof height is well half of this basically well that's it i'm in <laughs> i'm in a separate section to doug obviously he's going to be about three cars back but that's fine I've got my flask of tea and I've got my phone and the journey is about 20 minutes max and it's the perfect way to travel with dogs so I, I'm not I get seasick as well as claustrophobic uh, so I think a ferry journey would be much harder well uh, we have arrived we're in the UK the sun is shining I now just have to navigate the UK traffic let's see joy complete joy thanks for watching we hope you enjoyed this video if you haven't subscribed yet why not hit that subscribe button and ding that bell for future notifications so that you don't miss any of bella's big adventures